My name is Eldeen, I'm with Sony, and today let's take a look at binoculars. Now typically you get three types of binoculars. The Galilean, which is a lot older, simpler binocular, and these typically uh, use only two elements, a front and a back element. Um, nowadays they use mostly for opera or theater glasses, or even kids' cheap plastic binoculars that you could find in a toy store. The second type is your Poro Prism. Now these are a little bit larger, a little bit more complex. They are typically cheaper to manufacture than the third type, and uh, they usually have larger focal lengths. Now the third type of binocular is what we call a roof prism. These were designed so that the binoculars can become a little bit more rugged and compact. Although they're a little bit smaller, they don't offer you as great a focal length as you can find on your typical Poro prism glasses. However, today we have a fourth type of binocular. These are Sony's digital recording binoculars. And uh, let's get a little bit more into detail about the basics of binoculars and then how the DEV digital recording binoculars stack up. So when choosing binoculars you're faced with a number of different choices. First of all, let's have a look at those numbers. What do they mean? And you'll always see that binoculars are typically uh, two numbers. It would be you know, a 7x20, a 7x35, 8x12, or in this case these are 10x50s. So what, do they, what does that really mean when I choose a pair of binoculars? Now the first number always stands for the magnification. And that's how much larger an object looks in the distance versus how I see it with the naked eye. So if I look at an object down in the distance there, it looks like one times in the naked eye to me. As soon as I look through the binoculars, it now looks 10 times as large, because the first number on these is 10 by 50. And the same would go for smaller binoculars. If I have a 7 by 10 or 7 by 20, that would look seven times as large. Always go with the first number for magnification. So the second number measures the objective lens. Now that's the diameter of the lens in front of the binoculars. And this may vary. So smaller binoculars would have a smaller objective lens. So for instance, a seven by 20, the millimeter diameter would be 20 millimeters across. These binoculars have a 50 millimeter objective lens. So they're 50 millimeters across in front. So as you could see, the larger your pair of binoculars, the larger the objective lens, which allows more light through. So let's have a look how magnification affects your field of view. If I have a small magnification, say for instance a 7x, that means I'm going to get a little bit more in my image, but it's only going to magnify seven times as big. If I have a higher magnification, let's say a 10x, that means it's going to enlarge my subject by 10 times, but my field of view is going to narrow, so I won't get as much in my scene. So now you probably realize the limitations of having a traditional pair of binoculars. You're usually limited to only one focal length. Now, that said, you do get a few binoculars that do have zoom ranges. They're few and far between, they cost a lot of money, and they typically only have a very, very small zoom range. Now, the advantage of Sony's digital recording binoculars is that I can have a zoom range from a one-to-one, -one, in other words, what I look through here is exactly what I see without the binoculars on, all the way to a 20x zoom, equaling some of the very expensive, very large binoculars. So let's talk about image stabilization. Now, if I'm using a low magnification pair of binoculars, let's say a 5 or 7x, that's typically not a problem. But as soon as I step up to a higher magnification, let's say an 8 or 15 times, that really does become a problem because the shake is accentuated so much more. So Sony's digital binoculars take full advantage of camcorder technology that incorporate steady shot image stabilization. Now, that means that I can zoom throughout the range with these binoculars and have a very stable image. How do you focus a traditional pair of binoculars? There's a few different ways. Some binoculars focus each lens separately. Other binoculars have a little toggle like this one over here. Now this allows me to set my general focus, but once I've set my general focus, I then have to go and focus one or the other eye independently to ensure that that focus is in place. Now there's a number of problems of having manual focus on binoculars. For one, if your subject moves, you have to refocus. And typically you have to focus both eyes. So you have to refocus the general one and then the second one. Or you'd have to refocus each eye independently. This becomes a hassle if you're following moving subjects. So one huge advantage about having digital binoculars is that they will autofocus. And they will use the same type of autofocus system that you would find on most high-end camcorders. This means that even if a subject, whether it's going near or far, I don't have to worry about setting either eye. All I do is just follow the action and the binoculars do the rest for me. So to choose the right pair of binoculars, it's also important to understand how the human eye works. Now in bright light like this, where there's a lot of ambient light, my pupils will be about 2.5 millimeters in diameter. As it gets darker, my pupils will then dilate and in pitch darkness, it'll probably max out at about seven millimeters for a healthy pair of eyes. Now as you age, your eyes deteriorate slightly and they might only max out at about five millimeters the older you get. So let's have a look at something a little more complicated. No, not really, you just need to know a little bit of math 
and those two numbers that we used in the beginning. One is the focal distance, which was measured by the magnification, and the second one is the size of the objective lens. Remember, these are 10 by 50, and we'll use these as an example. Now, if I were to take a traditional pair of binoculars and lift these to my eyes, and as I pull them away, I can see two light spots appearing in the binoculars. Now, these are the binoculars pupils, and we call these the exit pupil. Now, if you take a look here, that exit pupil can be measured in millimeters as well. Now, that exit pupil can be calculated using those two numbers that we spoke about before, the magnification and the objective lens element. So if we had to take the objective lens and divide that by the magnification, that'll give you the exit pupil in millimeters. So for instance, these binoculars are 10 by 50. That means if I take 50, divide that by 10, my exit pupil is five millimeters. Likewise, if I had to take a seven by 20 pair of binoculars, that exit pupil will be approximately three because seven times three is about 21. So you're looking at just under three millimeters. So why is this important? Well, first of all, if the exit pupil is larger than the diameter on your pupil on your eye, it allows more light through than your eye actually requires. However, if the exit pupil is smaller than the diameter on your eye, you don't get sufficient light coming through, which means I wouldn't be able to see a clear image. How does that affect the exit pupil in bright daylight? Well, in bright daylight, an exit pupil like this would be five millimeters. My eyes would be at about 2.5 millimeters, which means I'm getting twice the amount of light than I actually require to see clearly. So these work great in bright conditions. However, as it gets darker and my eyes start to dilate, maybe up to seven millimeters, I suddenly surpass the diameter of the exit pupil. Now my eyes are at seven millimeters, but the exit pupil remains at five millimeters, which means I don't get sufficient light to see clearly in the dark. This is even more accentuated when you talk about lenses uh, or focal magnifications of seven by 20. So a seven by 20 pair of binoculars will only give you an exit pupil of a little under three millimeters. That means as soon as my pupils start dilating past three millimeters, I don't get sufficient light to see clearly. So one of the key advantages of digital binoculars is that we can make use of Sony's outstanding performance when it comes to CMOS sensors. Now this camcorder uses two lenses, two sensors, and two processors to give you a real crisp and sharp image, even in very low light situations. So let's look at those key features that make Sony's digital recording binoculars better than most binoculars on the market today. Number one, these binoculars have a fantastic magnification, all the way up to 20x. Now, traditional binoculars, those would be really big, really heavy, and really expensive, where these are a lot more compact and cost-effective. The second is the zoom range. Most binoculars have one fixed magnification, whereas these can go everywhere from a one-to-one -one all the way out to a 20x zoom, and everything in between. The third most important is the image stabilization. Built-in image stabilization on these binoculars allow me to seamlessly zoom from a subject near to far without any shake or vibration. The fourth most important is the autofocus. Most binoculars on the market today, I have to focus one eye at a time. And the fifth most important is the exit pupil on most binoculars don't really allow for great low light viewing. And if you had to get a binocular with a large exit pupil, those are typically very, very expensive. These utilize Sony's back illuminated CMOS sensor technology that give us great low light performance. Now let's take a look at some of the other features over and above those that these have to offer. So these binoculars feature two of Sony's high-end G-series lenses for outstanding clarity. It also has two XMOR CMOS sensors for great low light performance and HD video capture. Because there's two lenses and two sensors, there's also two processors that can give you a full 3D video capture. Over and above that, you can do up to 7.1 megapixel stills. So when the Sony engineers designed these binoculars, they paid particularly close attention to the form factor. First of all, when you pick these up, you'll find that all the buttons are in a position where you really expect them to be, making it really easy to use. You could also use these with or without gloves. You have an eye relief dial here to adjust the distance between your eyes, as well as independent diopter adjusters to focus. Underneath, you'll find an assignable dial that allows for manual adjustments. This is great for changing things like exposure or even focus when you want to override the autofocus system. You'll find a stereo mic, you'll find a cold shoe that allows you to adapt things on like additional microphones or maybe even lights. And in the front here you'll find a memory card slot where you can either put in a SD card or a Sony memory stick. Underneath there's a large cavity which allows for expanded battery time 
The nice thing about these is you can carry spare batteries with you, so if you eventually run out of battery time, you can easily replace them and keep on viewing. So on the side, we have a mic and headphone jack, as well as an HDMI and USB connector. So there you have it, Sony's digital recording binoculars. A better choice than traditional binoculars because they have fantastic magnification, a great zoom range, image stabilization, autofocus, and are fantastic in low light. In addition to that, they also record full HD, 3D, 7.1 megapixel stills, and you can geotag your videos and images. This makes these binoculars ideal for the person looking for an advanced pair, such as bird watchers, sports enthusiasts, naturalists, or hunters.